how come it takes so long time to deploy this change, which I think would increase security a lot. Welcome to Architecture Corner and today's guest on a video link from London is Jan Eldeman. He's an expert in financial sector and today's topic is about credit card frauds. With us in the studio here in Malmö is Greg Wikstand. Welcome Jan. Hello, welcome, thank you. And welcome Gregor. Thank you Kasimir. If you read the tabloids today, you can see there is a lot of articles about credit card fraud. But you can also read other articles in other newspapers that credit card fraud is getting lesser than today. What is the real situation today, Jan? Is it possible to use a credit card in a safe way? Well, in generally speaking, yes, you, you are safe using your credit card. But as usual, you have to be vigilant in when and how you use it. If, if, if we're talking about the online usage, we can see that the, uh, if you check your browser and make sure that the credit card details are transmitted safely, and you can do that by validating the little uh, lock that you will see somewhere around your browser, it should be green or gold, or at least not out. And then you use reputable websites. The most common issue is that people go to any kind of strange website and pay with their normal card. If you take these precautions, you will be fine. Nevertheless, sometimes you end up wanting to uh, pay for card, pay with your card in other places uh, where you don't know the website really well. And in those cases, I recommend to use uh, limited debit cards that are prepaid. This way, you know what risk you're taking and you know how much money you can lose. And the prepaid cards have another advantage, which is the uh, when you travel, you can use them to compartmentalize your risk of theft and loss. Uh, because you're going into places where you really don't know the shop or, or the site you're paying at, and it can be really good to have temporary cards that are uh, manageable. Another way to manage it is to use one-time cards. Some banks offer that and some don't. Generally, Kazimir, I think that there are ways to make sure that you are paid in a safe way. Mm. Gregor, do you agree with this? Um. I don't know that that many people actually do use these uh, uh, pre-charged uh, credit cards. Jan, can I ask you, aren't these pre-charged uh, uh, cards often um, um, uh, either Electron or Maestro cards, which means that uh, you cannot do a card not present purchase with them? Uh, no, they are uh, absolutely normal. You'll find that there is a bunch of them. Uh, if you search online for prepaid debit cards or prepaid credit cards, you will find a fairly large amount of providers. Uh, at least here in the UK and the US, I am not certain about Sweden per se, but they are very common across Europe. What is very surprising for me is that we have used smart cards for credit cards since the early 90s in France. Ten years later, it, it came across Europe. But still, in the US, I read recently that uh, only one third of credit card terminals are um, certified or activated for using uh, the smart card reader. How come it takes so long time to deploy this change, which I think would increase security a lot? Well, I, I think you're right. And, and we know in Sweden, I believe, that the, the uh, credit card fraud dropped by over 90% when they introduced the chip and pin card. We can only speculate. My guess is that the Americans probably have an old infrastructure that's been there for a long, long time. They were the first ones to issue credit cards on a large scale, and they probably have the same infrastructure there. It used to be very expensive to buy a credit card terminal, and then you had to have to pay uh, quite big monthly fees. But with new solutions like iSettle, uh, there is no upfront cost, and there is only a transaction cost. Um, do you think? This will speed up the um, deployment of more secure uh, credit card terminals. These solutions usually have a fairly high percentage that is taken off the price, uh, and, and the cost of these transactions are high. So as much as it will drive in, in small venues, it will drive, uh, the, drive up the usage of chip and pin. But in, in the larger venues and the big chains, the, the 
deals that you get are usually not good enough. So you need to go through your normal payment service providers to get the, the right kind of cost per transaction. You talk about the situation in US and the merchants there, they are complaining that they have to use uh, the chip and pin. Uh, otherwise they will bear the risk. Well, they, I mean, for the merchants, they have to invest in new infrastructure to use chip and pins. Obviously, they're complaining. It all comes down to who pays what. And as long as it's the banks that stand the risk, if a transaction is, is reversed or, or fraudulent, then the, the merchant has very little uh, interest in, in upgrading. As soon as you transfer that risk to the merchant, I, I think that the adoption will be quite quick. So I understood that the risk will, in the US, the risk will be transferred from January 1st, to 2017. When you do co- card present transactions, yeah. Yes. Well, that, that sounds reasonable to me. I think that the, the uh, in any way, the, the chip and pin does improve significantly the, the safety around card usage. So from my perspective, it seems all but natural. But uh, the increase in e-commerce and what will happen to the chip and pin? Because I don't have a chip and a pin read it to my computer and not to my mobile phone either. Now, what I think we will see is uh, the tokenization being adopted more and more. There are several payment solutions out there today that will use your card in the background, but will produce a, a one-time token that you use one off to pay with. And then that piece of information is only relevant in the context where you are at that time. So it can't be frauded in the same way as a, a credit card. So uh, in the UK, NFC terminals are rather common now. The, N- the NFC cards have become very, very popular in the UK. You can now use them in the tube in London. You can use them uh, to pay for other trips and trains. You can use them on the buses. Uh, most pubs, restaurants and shops have them. And the only thing you have to do is to wave them in front of the little terminal and you have paid. Now the NFC integration also means that you can use uh, your phone in different ways and uh, to any type of card you have you sort of have loaded up on your phone you can then just use your phone to tap and pay basically almost anywhere nowadays. So how can you protect yourself as a consumer from credit card fraud in the best way? You talked a little bit about it in the beginning but could you uh, give some good advice? Only use your card in reputable places. Uh, avoid using your card uh, when you're uncertain about the venue or if it's online, the website. Um, make sure that you have a temporary or limited debit card. So one way to protect yourself is to uh, reduce the geographical validity of, of your card. So some credit card providers will allow you to limit where in the world your card can be used. Now, this will not help you in your shopping, but it will stop the fraudsters from using your card elsewhere than you are. And that obviously limits the uh, the ways and places that you can use your card uh, and increases your safety. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, um, <clears throat> I did this and then I went abroad and I couldn't get any money and uh, I couldn't understand why. Until after an hour, I realized because I, I set the um, geographical limit, and I have other friends who also had the same thing happen to them. But of course, with with the bank uh, app in my phone, I could easily once I remembered, I could easily open the card again. Yeah, so that's quite common, and uh, it's not uncommon today that if your bank will detect where you live, n- sort of by the way they do fraud detection. And that you can, when you travel quickly across the globe, you can experience the same thing without actually having limited your card yourself. Uh, it happened to me several times that you, you fly from one city to the other, you go for dinner, and when you try to pay for the dinner, the card doesn't work and it's it declined. And then you get a phone call, usually 10 minutes too late, from the fraud department. What about skimming? If I uh, take out money on an ATM, I can... That could happen, and we have the number of skimming tries has increased, from what I understand. Yeah, I saw some uh, some numbers uh, recently that there was an increase of over four hundred percent on ATM related skimming. Uh, I think from two thousand fourteen to two thousand fifteen. I I think that that comes back to the chip and pin again, uh, because with chip and pin you have to retain the card and and. 
what I know from here in the UK is that the fraudsters are becoming more and more advanced. So you have to be vigilant to look even at an ATM that it looks normal, that it doesn't have any cover of the keyboard. That's one way of picking up your, your pin code or cameras that sit on top of it or someone snooping behind your back. Validating that the ATM is a real one can be quite hard because the fraudsters are really good. But if you do encounter a machine that acts strangely and then it doesn't return your card after the transaction, then I would instantly report that the card has been taken so that the bank can do something about it. Uh, what about all these automates where I do uh, pay my parking, pay for bus tickets, pay for other things that are small sums where I use the PIN car, uh, card I, and the PIN code? Well, Casimir, I never use my, my credit card for parking. I use a different card for parking. Casimir is more like me. I'm lazy. I have one card and it, it, it works for everything. And, and Gregor, I'm, I'm impressed that you have multiple cards uh, for different purposes. I think that it comes back to the same thing as the ATM. Look at the machine, does it look legitimate? And if it swallows your card, be vigilant and report it immediately. Thank you, Juan. It's been really nice to hear you from London. We will follow up in the next session about payment solution that was not so well thought. Looking forward to that.